All right, what's up Team Shine? Thanks for coming tonight. It's always an honor to sit here with you amazing ladies and do this thing with you because every morning that I wake up, I get to think about you guys and your businesses and all the people that we get to help and I just think it's amazing. So the fact that you're here is always so great. Matt is out with the kids. He's going to take tonight off because I've been putting him to work way too much. So we're going to give him a little night off and I'm going to talk to you guys about Instagram because, you know, with this business, it is um, a little bit tough because you, you need to find a way to reach people and you need ways to lead generate, so to speak, so that you've got something out there that's working for you all the time, right? Like, so if you start a blog and you have blog posts that you can reuse and post to your Facebook or, you know, just have that updated and people can find you on that. Um, you know, you've got your Facebook, you've got Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, Twitter. I mean, I don't use Twitter a lot, but there's a lot of different ways that coaches get out there. And, you know, Facebook groups or being in like different forums or things, you know, like even just having a ministry that you serve in. Like when I was in Mops last year, that's how Ashley Matheson and I met because we were in a Mothers of Preschoolers group and we connected, you know? So there's so many ways to meet new people and you just want to find something that works. You want to find two things that work for you. So for me, I just started an Instagram, I mean, before I was even a coach, but I decided instead of turning it into, instead of doing like a separate Stacey Rohde Fitness Instagram, I just added because I thought, well, that's how I'm doing my Facebook. I'm just, this is becoming part of my life. It's part of my journey. I might annoy a few friends, but that's okay because most of them won't unfollow me. You know, I'm hopefully going to add value. That's what we all want to do, right? We want to add value to other people's lives and give them tips and tricks that have worked for us. And just, like I said, just kind of share our journey. Uh, I just listened. I was talking to Megan before you guys popped on about Stephanie Davies. Have you guys heard the national wake-up call from last week? Mm, no. Phenomenal. Ronnie, did you hear it? No. It's so good. You have to go back and listen. Because I, I just paused it before I jumped on the call. Because I, I listen to every single one. It's like a thing that I have because I owe my business to those calls because that's what got me got me motivated to do this, um, some of it, you know. And she talks about the 80-20 rule. And I thought that was a great way because we kind of look at our diet and nutrition like 80% of the time we're good, 20% of the time we really just enjoy ourselves and have some fun food that we, you know, that we like. And that's what she said with posting. It's you're adding value. 80% of the time, and then 20% of the time you are asking them to reach out to you. You're sharing a little bit more about the business and um, inviting them to things. Uh, but you, you're being so consistent that they can't get you off of their mind, right? Like you're just, <laughs> she was talking about, she's like, you're just kind of there reminding them that they need to get healthy, and that's not bad. So anyways, my, my main point is, Find things that work for you and really run with it because that will help you. It'll work for you when you're not working, if that makes sense. So um, Instagram is a great way to do that. And I will be showing you guys my phone a little bit. But wh what I think of Instagram, and there's a call by Michael McBride that is in the uh, Must Listen calls in the Team Shine Coach group. But he kind of talks about Instagram being like a net, like where you can reach a ton of different people randomly and, you know, you can draw them in and have them join you over on Facebook because that's what uh, one of the coaches was talking about in a call that some of us listened to recently where her blog is kind of that net for her. So you're reaching these people from a distance and then you're inviting them in to message with you or join you on Facebook where they can see a little bit more of your daily life and it becomes a little bit more personal and then that way they can easily message you and join you. So that's a great way to look at Instagram, you know, or email you, whatever, whatever that looks like for you. So in the Team Shine files, there is a link called InstagramBioTricks.com and Chelsea Pearson is um, I think she's like a five-star diamond. I adore her. I think her posts are amazing. I probably told all of you to follow her, but, and she's a little bit younger. She's, I think she's like 24, no kids. So she's got a different take on it, but she came up with this whole list of like all the apps you can get for Instagram. 
how you can make your bio interesting. Like if you look at my bio, I obviously haven't done her bio tricks because I just have a basic one, which is fine because it's just kind of what I'm about, you know? So if you guys can kind of see, this is my bio that I'm talking about. Can you guys see that okay? I know Ronnie, mm. Ronnie and Paige, you can't. Can you see that, Dominique? No, I'll put it on. Um, like down? Uh, not maybe closer? Yeah, kind of. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Don't move. Okay, okay, perfect. So she's got some tricks in that document that you can um, make your name look different. You can put circle bubbles around the letters. You can space it out differently. And you see how I have my Facebook link in the bio? Well, uh, is that too close? <laughs> ah, dang it, where did, oh, the screen went. Okay, there we go. I'm like looking here. Okay, so you can put a link to your Facebook in your bio, right? So when you're posting, okay. you say link in bio, when they're looking at your picture and they're interested, and then at the bottom you say, you know, find me on Facebook, my link is in my bio. So like, oh, okay, go to that, um, and they can find you there. Because you'll always want a link there so that they know where to find more on you. Um, there was another tip that Michael McBride gave on that call, and it was, um, he, he has like some crazy amount of Instagram, like he is rocking Instagram and that's why I use his name, but he has a location on his photo and like, this is my photo. Okay. Can you guys see that? Yep. So it says Facebook me and then search Stacy Rody. So that's my personal page. It's not Rody fit life. My like page is the one that's in my bio but I just did search me, you know, with my regular name because it's easier because they can just be like, oh, Stacey Rohde, type it in. There you go. So that will be a, when you go to post a picture, it would be your custom location. And I'll show you that in a second because you could even do a fun custom location like um, Mama, Mama D's Kitchen or something goofy that when you're posting a recipe, you can name it, have that location and people might think it's clever or they just know, oh, she's in her kitchen cooking dinner, and that's where I am too, and they can relate to you, you know? Um, so you will, you know, post something, you know, we all know how to post something interesting and, and um, have people relate to you, ask a question, get them involved. So I am going to take a picture really quick on my Instagram, okay? Let's see. Okay, so there's my picture. <laughs> All right, but we need to edit this bad boy, right? Because even though I have the diva ring light <laughs> that makes me look like sort of like an angel, I love my <laughs> I just want to carry it around with me. I'm like, thank you, diva ring. Um, you guys need to get one in time because they're amazing. But you can go through all of the custom filters at the bottom, which are pretty good. And some of my favorites are lo-fi, Hefe, X Pro, and then there's black and white. So if you're really wanting something to look different and you're just kind of, you're either bored with the picture and you want to jazz it up or it's a really rough picture, like, oh, I just had a baby, let me make that black and white. You know what I mean? Like those type of things. Um, that's what that's good for. But there's a little sundial in the middle. And this is just like, so I clicked that sundial and that's like a, picture see it right in the middle it's like a picture better maker and you can use that and then also there's a wrench you'll see that wrench on the side mm -hmm. that is where the good edits are apparently my 12 year old niece stayed with me last summer and she showed me these editing tricks on instagram and it changed my life so you can go through and like adjust contrast you know you can kind of make it different like if it's dark in your house and you need to brighten it up you brighten it and you just move the lever over and click the check mark um, the only one you want to be careful about is the sharpen because it can kind of make you apparently look like you have more wrinkles so it's good for food and maybe not so good for the face um, but there's a ton of different there's like add highlights add shadowing 
more of a saturation for color or you can change the photo to be a certain color. So it's really fun. I really, I like the contrast. And then you can also tilt the photo, like move it over to the side. I don't know if that's even working. But anyways, you can make it kind of slant and angle. So let's see here. I'm gonna add some stuff. Okay, I gave myself a spray tan with the warmth and then I'm gonna make the picture green just for fun. Okay, so there's that. And if you wanna go back to the original, you tap the photo. So you can just go and go, okay, I'm not too far off. I'm not making myself, I mean, obviously I made myself look crazy because I'm green, but you know, you can look and, and double check your work as you tap it. So those are some editing tools. And if you don't post it, I think it will still go to your camera roll with the edits. You'll have to play around with it or you could post it really quick and delete it and then have it go to your camera roll because you may not want to post it at that moment, but you wanted to edit it because you had time in that moment. So that is a great way to get some good edits on your photos and make them look professional. Uh, the more contrast they have, Celine Johnson was saying in her seminar, the more contrast a photo has, so if it's like black and white or you've got a really good color contrast with it, it's gonna stop people in their tracks more and it's gonna make them look at it. So if you can, like I said, be a little bit more professional, tweak them up a little bit. Matt Rohde's crazy with this stuff. He loves it. He's always like, edit that photo. What are you doing? And I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta, okay, I was just in a hurry and I wanted to just post it. But it really makes a difference when you take that extra couple seconds and you make it look as good as it can be without totally blurring out your face. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to post a selfie today. Do I have to? And there's just days where people want to see your face and it helps. You know, if you look at a lot of the top coaches and you go to their Instagram accounts, it's their face. It's the selfies. It's all of that. And so those are the photos that I get the most likes on. I don't know. Do you guys notice that at all with the selfies? No. Um, is this helpful at all, you guys? I'm going to kind of keep going, but are you following me okay? Yeah, well, the thing for me is I used to have a cell phone. It's my job cell phone, but I broke it, so I don't have any more cell phone for a few months. But in a few months, I'm going to have a cell phone, so there is no reason for me to buy one now. So I take all the information you give me, but I cannot use it now. It's not worth it to buy a cell phone. Right. Yeah. If you're going to get one, you're kind of frozen. Sorry. Very interesting. But for now, I can, uh, I will not use it. I can't use Instagram for now because it's only on cell phones. So. Right. Right. That reminds me too. That's a good point because there is a site called Icona Square. It's I C O N. Mm -hmm. O square I think and that is a place where you can manage your Instagram on your computer so you can add hashtags to the comments which I've heard isn't as effective as putting it in the actual caption so the research is still out I think I heard Shalina can say that because she has an Instagram impact um, Instagram account you can follow and it's called Instagram in impact and she gives you tons of tips on there so I sometimes will go there, you know, if I have a spare second at night and I'll look through what Shaleen's up to and what she knew because, you know, things change all the time. Like they're letting people do sponsored ads on Instagram now. I don't know if you guys have seen McDonald's pop up in your Instagram feed because I'll be like, oh my goodness, that's so gross. Why is there McDonald's in my Instagram? I don't follow them. And I'm like, oh, sponsored. It's an ad. Okay, whatever. I can't unfollow, but you know, you know how we are about that kind of stuff. Like, no, McDonald's, it's like the devil of the United States. <laughs> That's another subject. Okay, getting back to topic here, guys. Um, when you... Uh, uh, just a question. Yeah. Because I don't know about the States. I, I, I don't know about you, but in Canada, uh, what McDonald's just had done in, in the past month, their, their sales is just going so down. Uh, McDonald's so they have created lots of salads and so, uh, lots of healthy foods 
for them to to have more sales. Do you have salads in uh, in McDonald's in the states? Yeah, we do. Uh, okay, smoothies and salads. I don't know when they did that, but they definitely do market to that. For sure. Okay. What you guys say? Don't you think McDonald's is stepping it up down here too? I think they've had to. I know. I know. But they're still, you know, using the the processed meats and all of that on the salads. And then if you put all the dressing on it, it's still not helping. Right. Yeah. But it's a step in the right direction. It is. It is for people that are just so used to going there by habit, they can at least not order something different. It's so funny because I used to be like, who orders a salad at McDonald's? If I'm going there, I'm getting a Big Mac, man. I'm not playing. Yeah, this is what this is what they said. They were, uh, do you see, uh, interviewing people? Do you see, you see that? They went on the street and asked questions to people. Yeah. And uh, they say, oh, now that there's a salad uh, in McDonald's, if you go to the McDonald's, will you eat a salad? And most of people were saying, well, if I go to McDonald's, it's because I want to eat uh, scrap, uh, scrap, scrap, well, eat fast food. Right. They're right. But I think, I think this is good for, let's say, a mom who wants to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Right, and then her, uh, you're frozen again. Burgers, then this is a good, this is a good thing. But if I want to eat a salad, we'll eat at home, you know? Exactly. It's not yeah. as, yeah, I mean, a salad is a salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eat that at home and get to save the good stuff. Yeah, anyways. Fish sticks or whatever, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, that's so crazy. Okay, guys, so I am going to – I'm going to try to pretend like I'm posting this photo, okay? So it's – you're going to go down. You're going to put your caption in, and then you're going to put some hashtags. Now, hashtags, like I said, I'm not super familiar with exactly how to target your market with hashtags, but I do use hashtags that relate to my brand. So for you, you know, if you want to say something like um, – mom of four or mom of two or fit mom or mompreneur that's a good one because it's telling people that you're an entrepreneur and that you're a mom and i just had someone comment i used that hashtag for the first time and there's another friend of mine who owns her own business and she was like oh i like that mompreneur like she caught the hashtag you know and you can use hashtags for your city if you go you can actually search hashtags um on a different screen and i can show you that but you can search hashtags and look and see what's popping up in your area and then see which ones you'd like to use so that people know where you're from. Because you could have someone that's following you that lives pretty close, but they had no idea. And obviously you could connect that way. Um, some other things you could be like, you know, happy, healthy, free. Um, I use life by design a lot, you know, different things that just like I said, promote your brand, promote what you're about and what you want to say. And then you can throw funny ones in. I'm always cracking up though when I see like the super long hashtag and I'm literally like reading it, trying to read it for like two minutes. I'll be like, and uh, Ed, Ed. <laughs> like that is the longest hashtag. I am now dizzy. Thank you for making me read that. So I try to keep mine a little bit shorter unless like a really good long one that whatever. So um, once you post your caption, like I said, use your hashtags in your caption. It used to be to where you could put hashtags in the comments and it would pop your photo back up into the newsfeed, kind of like how we comment on each other's pictures on Facebook and they pop back up in people, people's news feeds. I don't think that's the, the trick now. But um, okay, once I put in my caption, I am going to go down to name this location. I don't know if you guys can see. So I named the location. I'm going to click on that and it's going to pull up all the areas that are by me. So it's got the school right by me. And I'm just going to do a let's see, Facebook me. So there's going to be a custom location that comes up. So Facebook me search Stacy Rohde. So that's what's nice is it's going to save your custom location. So you don't have to type the whole thing in every time. And it shows up on the very top of your picture, like I showed you guys. Okay, so I think that is the general idea for posting a photo. 
Now I want to get into real quick, um, when you hit the little search button, you can search for people and what this will do, I'm just going to go, okay, think of celebrities that you like to follow. Think about people that their life interests you and it's just, you just enjoy going to their Instagram account and looking it over because those are the type of people that like you're kind of like their life like Jennifer Aniston. I love her. She's one of my favorite actresses. I love her style. I love the movie she's in. And so I went to her Instagram. So I'm going to search for her. I just started following her actually when I was um, preparing for this call. Cause I forgot. I'm like, why don't I follow Jennifer Aniston on Instagram? What am I thinking? Cause you're looking for people that get you right. You're looking for your lifers, so to speak. That's what Shalene Johnson calls them. And the more you can find people, the more you can be bold enough to be yourself, you're going to find people that are similar to you and you're going to really enjoy working with them because you just get each other. And that's the name of the game. That's kind of what you want to, what you kind of want to do. Okay. So I went to Jennifer cause I'm obsessed. Right. And then I'm going to go to, um, cause in, in the past I've thought, well, maybe I'll search hashtags. Maybe I'll search mom of two hashtag. And then I could find other moms that have two kids that are just like me and start following them and start commenting on their pictures. And, um, that takes a lot of time. So this cuts out a couple steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through all of her millions and millions of followers and I'm going to look for their photo that kind of looks like someone like, you know, a woman with a child in the photo with her in the profile picture or someone that just looks like she's my age, you know? You can kind of get a feel for it really quick when you start scrolling down. And sometimes I'll just give them like a quick tap just to see because a lot of them are private and I don't want to be requesting a ton of people. I don't know why I feel weird about that. Matt, Matt wouldn't feel weird. He'd be like, just request them. <laughs> just friend 65 people a day on Facebook because that's what you do, right? Um, <laughs> not here. Okay. So anyways, you just go through and you look and then I'll be like, Oh, okay. I may just request them if I get tired of being like, Oh, everyone's private, but you can literally go through, look for women that look like they would get you and you would get them. And you can do, um, you can follow 50 people in five minutes. That's like the cap that Instagram has put on it. So if you guys are just like in the car, waiting for something, you know, whatever you're doing, if you just have four or five minutes, that will increase your Instagram following because what's going to happen is you can go, you know, once they accept it and you can go to their account if it's not private, right? And you can see all their photos and you can like, Shaleen Johnson, what I recently read is you can like five photos and comment on three and you'll usually get a follow back from doing that. And like I said, go to her Instagram impact, um, Instagram account, research your, do your own little research. But that's what I try to do. I'm like, okay, let me find five photos that interest me. I'll comment on three. I'll be like, oh, what lipstick is that? I love that color or, um, anything. Just be like, oh, your son is so cute. I, you know, I love having, you know, a son or whatever it is. That's kind of just reaching out, maybe asking a question, engaging with them and they'll write back. They'll be like, oh, you know, this and this, and it's this color. And I'll be like, well, where did you get it? And then I'll ask them again. So it's kind of about just getting engagement with people on a different level and it doesn't have to take long. So at that point, I just let them follow me and then they'll start to see, oh, this girl's into fitness. You know, she's going to come to, they're going to come to my account and be like, okay, she gets, she likes to eat clean. Oh, I like to eat clean. Oh, I like to do this. And so, you know, they'll follow you and you never know what that turns into. That could turn into, um, like Julia Dockery and I met on Instagram, right? And she's a coach now and she rocked the 21 day fix and, um, she ended up living pretty close to me, which was weird. We were in the same state. Now she's in a different state, unfortunately, but, um, that's okay. Cause we have Facebook, so it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, so that is kind of an idea there. Let me just look over really quick. Am I losing you guys? Am I keeping you okay with all of it? Yeah, that's okay. Is that good? Uh, you can delete photos on Instagram too. Like if you've done a lot of clean eating um, ads like I do, I'll go through and I'll, I'll just go to the little three dots next to the picture and you can delete it. And sometimes I'll just go through and delete some of them. Sweep yourself. Make sure to, you know, look at the last, you know, couple swipes on your phone and be like, okay, if I were someone 
would I follow myself by just giving myself a couple scrolls? So make sure to always be like, okay, let me make sure I'm not posting everything about workouts. Let me throw some other things in there because I tend to do a lot of fitness. And so I have to work on that. Um, when you post, this is really important, you guys, because Facebook owns Instagram, but I don't know why when it posts directly from Instagram to your Facebook, I don't understand why Facebook doesn't let more people see it. But apparently I've heard from other coaches just being at events and hearing people talk about it. Um, you should always copy and paste your caption. Do you guys want to do that from your phone? Just like hold it down, copy it, select all. And this, I usually select all before I add my hashtags because I don't want to really always put my hashtags on Facebook. But even if it's just a personal photo that I'm not putting to my like page, I'm just doing it to my personal Facebook, I will post it on Instagram. I will go over to my Facebook, upload the same photo, and paste the, the caption there just because it only takes me a couple seconds. And if more people on Facebook see it that way, that's just what I choose to do. So that is a tip for you as well. Because if you're going to take the time to do these posts, you may as well get the best thing for your buck, you know? Um, and if anyone else has heard anything different, please let me know. Because I am by no means an expert, but this is just kind of my habits that I do. Um, let's see. Oh, and then of course, you know, people don't follow products. They follow people. And we hear that again and again. But I still need reminders, you know, posting a picture of, just your Shakeology cup with your blender in your bag, it's not super interesting. Now, if your face is in it and maybe you've like tilted the photo and you're being goofy or, you know, you're making a funny face or your kid's in the picture with you and you guys are cheersing your Shakeology cups, um, that kind of stuff, I think people stop and they're like, oh, I get that. Like, that's cute. I like that. So make sure to always do that. Um, yeah, so just find your niches. You know, think if you love country music, go through and look at the people that follow your favorite country music, music artists or, you know, find those little niches that you really enjoy because they're going to enjoy following you because you post similar stuff as that. Like I follow um, all the ex-bachelorettes and bachelors. I'm totally obsessed with that show. So I'll be like, oh, yeah, she just had a baby and, oh, they broke up and it's so ridiculous. But just, you know, have fun with it. And then when you're going to scroll Instagram for pleasure, make sure you just schedule a time. Like Megan and I were talking about it because it can really be a time suck. Anything, you know, Facebook news, feed scrolling and Instagram scrolling. It's such a fun thing. And I'll literally like, fall asleep at night on my bed. I'll be like, oh, I love looking at this. And then, like the phone falls on my face and I'm like, okay, time to stop Instagram scroll scrolling and put the phone away because I have to wake up for my workout tomorrow. That is not productive time use because, you know, as coaches, like, Every minute we have with our family, working our business, it all adds up. So just be smart with your time. Like set an alarm if you need to. Be like, I have 10 minutes and I'm going to totally indulge on Instagram right now. No one's going to stop me. You know, just give yourself that time. Um, okay. I know I've got more to talk about. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Okay. You only, the only thing you want is you want a higher ratio of people following you than you following other people. So if that ratio gets off, I think Instagram can kind of flag your account. So not that we have a ton of time to be following millions of people on Instagram, but you can go through and see who you're following just real quick and just unfollow some people. You know, if no one's reached out, if you don't, if you haven't seen their face, if you don't recognize them, you can just unfollow them and keep that ratio to followers. Well, you know, whatever. Keep it right. Um, yeah. So just kind of, you can even keep a little journal of who's commented and who's liked your photo because you could go to their account and you could keep an eye on them. Just kind of like we do on Facebook. <coughs> Liking your posts on Facebook, it's the same with Instagram. You could be like, who, you know, when you see someone like a photo on Instagram, you're like, hmm, who is that? okay, that's a creepy guy that I maybe need to block. Okay. And then you like go down and see someone else who's liked a photo. And I just go to their account and I'll just like some stuff and comment on stuff because they've already reached out on mine. So now I'm going to reach out on theirs. Um, you know, I think, I think that's it. You guys, I, we have eight minutes left. Is there anything else that we need to go over? Any other successes you guys have had on Instagram where you're like, 
that was weird. Like someone actually emailed me from an Instagram post or something. Do you guys like Instagram? Well, you know, for me, I, it's all new. I don't know anything about Instagram. So yeah. I would be brand new on that. So, but I'm sure I will like it. Yeah, you'll, I think you'll really like it. Because you don't yeah. even sometimes, I feel like on Instagram, you could just post a photo and say like two words in the caption. You know, sometimes you don't need to write a longer post. Where Facebook, people seem okay. to take more time maybe to read. Okay. Um, and I, Amy Silverman, I just went to her Instagram. You guys may want to go. She's like number two in the company right now. And I think Amy Silverman. Okay. She is an awesome coach to follow because she is all about being yourself. Like literally, she's like, my business went crazy when I just started sharing my story. I stopped trying to be cookie cutter coach and do what everyone else was doing. And I literally just became myself and I didn't, I don't care. I did. She just didn't care what anybody thought. And, um, not that you don't care, but you kind of, you know, those, those thoughts get in your mind sometimes. And maybe you don't think your story of how you found out about coaching or how you found out about the nutrition and the workouts. It doesn't seem like that cool of a story, but I get encouraged when I read other people's stories because it makes me go, Oh, well, my story is pretty cool. Like it's not a small thing that I get to work out every day in my house and have great results and love it. Right. So go to Amy Silverman. Her husband is, um, Kevin Marsh. I think you'll see him in her photos. So I just started following him and that was one of my little indulgences the other night. I didn't want to go to bed. I was being like a two year old and just, you know, trying to stay up as late as I could before my phone fell on my face. And I really liked his Instagram because it was a guy's point of view. And it was a guy who they obviously work together. They're moving to Puerto Rico for, six months out of the year because she's number two in the company. So she makes, you know, any amount of money that she wants, but it was really cool as to how he would like throw in little pieces about their coaching and their beach body life in their everyday life too. And Megan, uh, Ewaldson's really good at that too. I just love when they so casually, they're not selling at all. I mean, yeah, he'll post his email, a lot, but it was, it's just, you don't get a salesy feeling from them. And uh, I think that's something as coaches that we can continually refine because for me, I'm just speaking obviously for what I feel, but, um, you have to be bold enough and almost quote unquote salesy enough to put yourself out there so that people know what you're doing. Because if you're too sly and on the down low, like, Oh yeah, I'm just doing this thing. People don't get it. When I first started, you know, my personality is not super confrontational or super bold or anything. And they'd be like, well, now are you selling that beach body stuff? Like, I really don't understand what you're doing. So I, I didn't explain it enough in the beginning and give the full circle. And you can kind of do that through all of your posts, like pick a message that you want to share for the week and split it up to your post. You'd be like, yeah, I'm just in my kitchen making dinner, but I was thinking about this and then tie in part of like your journey thus far or little clips of your story. And so anyways, I just like going and reading other coaches stuff because they're, they've been, they've been doing it for like four or five years. Like it's just ingrained. Like it is who they are. You know, they're like diehard beach body coaches and, and they work it in beautifully into their posts. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Anything else? Any other feedback that you guys have? Ronnie, no. You've been doing Instagram. Oh, sorry, Donnie. There's a delay. Ronnie, you like Instagram, right? Well, you know what? I'm, I have an account, but I've never really like done anything with it. I'm, I like Pinterest a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're Pinterest. Yeah. No. And that's fun because there's a lot of coaches that start blogs and then they just pin the photo to the blog post. And so yeah. find them there and that's a good way to do it. Yeah, I still haven't really jumped into into that yet. It's I don't know. I haven't haven't seen too many posts or um, you know things on like you know how to how to build a business on on you know Pinterest. Right. Yeah. I bet if you uh, YouTubed, there's a ton of Beachbody coaches that make trainings, and I bet you cool stuff. Find one there. Yeah. 
I know that Coach Glitter and is it Natalie Gets Fit, they did a whole um, Pinterest, I think they called it Penfinity, um, training to launch your business on Pinterest. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, Pinfinity. Um, Ronnie, you would like Coach Glitter. You need to follow her because she's a makeup artist. So you'd totally dig her. <laughs> she's a means makeup artist. Yeah, I think I know who that is, yeah. She's good about tying in just real life stuff too. Don't you think Paige, don't you like coaches, Coach Glitter's posts? Yeah, I know she does a, a really great job in, in tying in fitness. Yeah, cause she, and she does a lot of, she adds value a lot too, which is crazy. What were you uh -huh. gonna say? Sorry. Dominique, were you gonna say something? Oh no, nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing. Oh man, guys, well, Listen, I was going over Summit stuff today because it's getting really close. It's like a month and a half away. And I just have to say, like, I, if you even have a voice in your head that's telling you, I think I should maybe go to Summit, I think I should just pay the money now, get on a plane and get there because magical things could happen. I swear you should just do it. Just listen to that voice. Like Dominique, we're just talking, we were just talking about the voice and it's so funny because it does, it happens. And I, um, I can't tell you guys how crazy your business will change. If you go to summit this year, it's not too late. There's still beds and rooms available. I don't have to cancel the reservations until like two days before we go down there. Um, but it's going to be really fun. So I encourage you to come um, I know that yeah, I just don't want the thing that I don't want is for you to look back next year. Like when you go to summit next year, cause you're a little bit more invested. You've been doing the business longer. I don't want you to go next year and be like, dang, why didn't I go last year? Stacy told me to go and I should have gone. I just don't want that to happen to you because I care about you guys and I care about the business. So that's my two cents y'all. So don't even be talking about anything. <laughs> message me if you need, if you have questions and Samantha and Ashley, I will start doing posting videos and posting more info now that we're getting it in our emails. In our, I, think I might either do like a or just the event in So, with that being said, guys, have the best week and wake up tomorrow with so much fire in your belly for everyone that you can help that you just open your computer and you rock your business because you can wake up every morning with that kind of drive and purpose. We're going to go places, and I'm just so excited to see what happens with all of our businesses. So, love you guys. Peace out. Bye-bye. Okay. Nighty-night. See you guys next week. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.